Don't miss a beat, join the notification squad by clicking that bell, you'll get notified every time I upload a video, and be sure to join our Discord to talk and get help with your code. So welcome back to the source code, my name is Deshaun, and today we're going to be looking at how to have two-factor authentication using Google Authenticator. Now there are a couple different apps you could use authenticators on, uh, I think Google Authenticator probably makes it the easiest way to do 2FA on a server, or really an app per se. Uh, we're going to be using Maven for this, and we're going to need this dependency right here. Uh, I'll have a link to where you can find all this information and all of the source code for Google Authenticator on top of uh, all my code will be available for you guys on GitHub. So also I just want to explain what happened last week. My computer is still doing uh, the kernel security check crashing. Uh, I'm going to try a new hard drive. I just bought a new hard drive. I'm going to install Windows on it. I'm going to do some stress tests to see if my hard drive is the reason. My hard drive is pretty whole old so I think that might be the reason uh, and if it is uh, I'm just gonna reinstall Windows on the new hard drive and all my programs and we'll go from there and hopefully we won't have any more crashing um, so yeah so let's go ahead and get started I already have something set up here in our public void uh, on enable we have an array list of uh, UUIDs for auth locked who's basically going to be uh, once they've added it to the account um, they're gonna be auth locked until they add their authentication code uh, and then just the uh, registering events and then uh, the config there so let's just go ahead and do uh, at event handler. And this is going to be public void on join. And this is going to be a player join event event. And we're just going to go ahead and get the, oops, not the player, player join event. We want the player, player equals events dot get player. Then what we want to do is we want to say if this config does not contain auth codes dot player dot get unique ID we want to go ahead and um, basically start doing the Google Authenticator so we're gonna say Google Authenticator g auth or g auth equals new Google Authenticator then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say Google Authenticator key key equals create credentials. Now what we can do is we can go ahead and just send the player a message here. So we'll just say player dot send message your Google and we'll just use these for the sake of time. Your Google and make this be your Google auth code and seven is and a and it'll say key plus get key and now what we can do is we can go ahead and say player dot send message and it'll be gray your account or we'll say you must enter this code or write it down you must enter this code in the Google Authenticator app or write it down for future use. Uh, let's not actually have to write it down. We'll just say you must enter it into the Google Authenticator app before leaving the server. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and just say this dot get config dot set and we'll just set auth codes dot and then player dot get unique ID and then we'll go ahead and do key dot get key and then we'll just go ahead and save the config here. Okay, and then we're just gonna say else auth dot locked dot add player dot get unique ID. So the first time they join the server, um, they'll be able to walk around and do whatever. But the next time they're going to be locked in because their off all their secret key is what it's called is going to be set inside of the config. So they're going to have no choice but to uh, go ahead and do that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a private void or sorry private boolean, and this is going to be player input code, and this is just going to take a player 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 
And now the Google Authenticator code is actually just a series of numbers. So we're just going to use int there. And then we're just going to use string. And this is going to be secret key equals this dot get config dot get string. And it's going to be auth codes dot player dot get unique ID. And then the next thing we can do is we can go ahead and say Google Authenticator G auth. Let me just change that up there to be G, G with a capital A two just for the sake of this. So we're going to say G auth equals new Google Authenticator. And then inside of here, we're just going to go ahead and say Boolean code is valid equals G auth dot authorize. And it's going to be the secret key and the code. And now the secret key is the key that they're given uh, in the on join there uh, for the first time. OK. So what we can do now is we can say if code is valid, we will just go ahead and auth locked dot remove player dot get unique ID. And then we're just going to go ahead and return code is valid because it's going to return true. Else, well, we don't really need else. We can just go ahead and say return code is valid here as well. <clears throat> okay, so what we can do now is in the, we have to check their chat. So we're going to say event handler is public void chat. And this is just going to be async, oops, not activation system, async player chat event, event. And then what we can do is we got to go ahead and grab player player equals event dot get player like always, and then we want to go ahead and get string message equals events dot get message. Then we're going to say if auth lock dot contains player dot get unique ID, and only if it contains the player with the with that unique ID, we are going to go ahead and do a try and catch. And I'm going to use just a generic exception here, which you guys should not do. I'm just doing it for the sake of this. And then what we'll do is we'll say try, and we're gonna have it try to parse an integer. Um, and the reason why we're putting this on a try and catch is because if it comes back false or it comes back as not being an integer, uh, we're just gonna catch it and send the message here. So we'll actually just set this up. So player dot send message, and this is just going to be and C incorrect or expired code. A code will a code will only contain numbers. So we'll just give them as the friendly reminder there. All right. So if we can parse it as an integer, what we're going to do is we're going to say if player input code, and this is a boolean. Remember, so it's going to return back true or false. So it's going to be player or code. So if it is true, we're going to go ahead and do auth locked dot remove player dot get unique ID. And then we're going to go ahead and say player dot send message, and we'll just go ahead and say and a welcome to the server because they passed the authentication, and we'll say access granted, and then we'll just make this like a. And B. And welcome to the server. And if it is not right, we're just going to go ahead and copy this message right up into here. Okay, so the next thing we have to do is we basically just have to run through all of the different events we want to have canceled when somebody tries to do something but they're in the auth lock tier. So it's actually pretty easy. So we're just going to say event handler. And this is going to be public void move and player move event event. And we just want to go ahead and grab the player. Player equals event dot get player. And then we're going to say if auth locked dot contains oops dot contains player dot get unique ID. We are going to go ahead and just do event dot uh, set canceled. Uh, and also what we want to do here is at the end of everything here, we just want to go ahead and say um, 
event dot uh, set cancel, which shouldn't um, cancel the actual testing of all this here. This should all this code should still go through. It's just not going to allow the text to go through the actual game. But anyways, back to this. So event dot set cancel, and we'll just send them. Um, I guess we can send them a message. We we should probably send them a message on when they join here. So we'll just grab the, or we'll just say player dot send message. Please open the Google. Oops. Google Authenticator app and provide the six digit code. And we'll just make this a nice red there so that way they, they know. Okay, so we're actually really just going to copy this um, a bunch of times. Um, well, not a bunch of times, a few times here. Because we're gonna, just going to only change a few things. So this is going to be block break. And this is going to be block break event. And this is going to be block place. And now you can cancel as many of these events as you want to. Uh, block place event. Okay, so now that we got all that, we're going to go ahead and save. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, we're going to build this. All right, so my server is on and Google Authenticator has been launched. So let's just go ahead and join our server here. See if we get any errors. We shouldn't. Okay, so you can see there that we have joined and it says your Google Auth code is that long line of code. You must enter the code in Google Authenticator app before leaving the server. So I'm just going to open the Google Authenticator app on my phone. And Authenticator, okay. Uh, let me delete my old one. Delete. Remove account. Okay, so then in the app, we'll just go ahead and do click plus. We'll do a manual entry. And our account will just say uh, tutorial. And our key is going to be Z six S P B M M J N N seven three Z Z B W. And we'll go ahead and add that. Okay, so now it is added into my server. And you can see right now we can do whatever we want to, but if we log out and log back in. You can see, please open the Google Authenticator app and provide the six digit code. So you can see that we can't do anything right now. Uh, we can't move, nothing. Uh, so kind of annoying. But if I go ahead and say hi, you can see incorrect or expired code. Uh, well, let's say my code. My code right now, I'll wait until a new one refreshes here so we can get a little bit more time. So let's just say my code is, so my code right now is 611982. But I'm going to enter 556651. And you can see there that it says it's incorrect. But if I enter 611982, access granted. So I can join the server. So that is a really simple way that you guys can use uh, Google Authenticator. And now you can make it more complex. You can do it on like timers. So after a certain amount of time, they have to reuse their Google Authenticator. Right now, it's only making it so I have to just use it whenever I join. So uh, a new code just refre refresh, it means uh, 450696 and access granted. So that's all I got for you guys today. If you guys enjoyed the video, uh, be sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe. And I'll have a video soon talking about the new series that I got coming up on the channel. Uh, just got to get a few things together for them, and hopefully I can get my hard drive working by that point. But yeah, that's all I got for you guys, and thanks for watching.